In this video, I wanna show you guys exactly what you get when you do remote training with us. So what you're looking at right now is the profile page. Um, so this is essentially the home page that you'll get of your training log. So this is where we're trying to track um, and record all the different variables that we're trying to improve in you um, as an athlete. So I'll zoom in a little bit. Some of the things that you'll see here, um, player profile, so your age, school, position, height, and weight. We also have a place for you to put your goals so that every time you come back to this profile page, um, they're right there for you to see. A little bit below that and to the left, we have our first actual um, tracking chart. So this is gonna be for your body weight. We have a graph and then we also have um, a chart for you. So how this works is you plug in your initial weight. So let's say you come in weighing 165 and your goal is to be 180 pounds, right? So as we put numbers into the chart, we can see the graph um, update as well. So now month one is actually gonna pull from our lifting logs. So you won't actually have to touch um, your profile page. Instead, you just need to actually fill out your logs. You can see here um, that there's a place for us to track body weight. So in this particular log, um, the first tab, the first lifting tab is weeks one through three, and the second one is weeks four through five. So that's gonna pull from week one um, of the second tab, because that would be week four, so it'd be after a month of training with us. So let's say on that day, the athlete weighs 168. If we go back to the profile page, we can see that, okay, it's now inputted into the chart for us, and then the graph is updated as well. So over time, we can see um, as we get out further and further um, along in the actual program, you can see if you're trending um, and, and reaching towards those goals that you've set for yourself. Um, and then that also allows us to reevaluate if you reach your goals, okay, now what? Do we need to go up more? Do we need to stay the same? Um, so we can just kind of recalibrate what we're trying to do. So that's body weight. Um, and we're gonna have charts like that for pretty much everything that we're trying to track. Um, so we would also track exit velo. This is the position player template. Um, we also have a pitcher and a catcher template. Um, so obviously for the pitcher template, we would not be tracking um, some of this stuff. We would not be tracking exit velo, um, but the general template still works in the same way. So you're gonna have your profile page that's gonna pull numbers from your logs um, so that we can see long-term progress um, in, in what we're trending towards. So, but for the position player template, we're gonna be doing exit velo. Again, this chart will work um, just like the body weight. We'll get into the uh, hitting logs later so I can show you um, how those work, but we'd be tracking exit velo. Um, we're gonna be looking at your assessment. So when you first sign up for programming with us, one of the first things that you'll do is go through a, a actual physical assessment. So in our case, this is 23 um, different, different movements that we're looking at, um, just covering different joints in the body and um, different movements trying to figure out how you move as an athlete and if there's any major restrictions um, that might be holding you back so we know what to program for you um, in terms of correctives or in terms of just trying to get you to move better. Um, so in each of these uh, cells here, you get a pass or a fail um, and we'd retest all the failed ones every three months um, to try to get you moving better as an athlete and to get you um, less restricted in your movement with that assessment piece. So that's that, um, we'd also be tracking heart rate and the reason that we do that um, is the lower you can get your heart rate, um, the more parasympathetic you're gonna be relative to what your normal is. So if your normal is a 70 heart rate, if you're able to get that down to 65 or to 60, that means that you're able to relax a little bit more than you could in the past. Um, so we're trying to get this to trend down, which means that you're gonna recover better um, and then ultimately be more prepared for your training sessions. Um, so that's why we're tracking heart rate. We're also going to have a strength profile for you. So I'll demonstrate this for you. Um, but as well as your assessment, one thing that you're gonna be doing when you first sign up for training with us um, is doing a strength profile. So it says one rep max here. I wanna actually have you do a one rep max. It would be a three rep max. Um, and then I'd be able to calculate your one rep max from that. But let's say you have 225 here, 405, 85. Um, let's say you get 20 pull-ups, you go 80 here, 100, and then 31 and 32. So now, once we plug in all these numbers, it gives us a pretty good picture of you as an athlete. So for one, we have your strength numbers um, in the first four, so we can see, okay, how strong is this guy? The last four numbers um, are your power numbers, so how do those stack up? 
And not only that, we can then add those two together to see power plus strength, how how are you in those different areas as an athlete and how are you as a total athlete? So even if maybe you're stronger than you are powerful, we can see that, but we can also see, okay, maybe that's okay because his total number um, is above this uh, certain baseline um, that we've set. So I really like that total number in terms of just helping to figure out um, how much strength plus power you have. So how are your athletic qualities um, as a whole? So you'll be doing that um, as part of your initial eval. And then we're also gonna be tracking uh, weighted ball um, velocities long-term as well. So whether that's just the five ounce, um, for some guys, they will only test with a five ounce actually, so that's all we'll be tracking. Um, for some guys, it'll be all the way from a three to a seven ounce. There's not really one set program, um, it's just what works for each particular guy. But again, we're gonna be able to see trend lines um, over the period of time that you're with us and see if you're trending um, up, down, if. Uh, maybe four ounces going up, but five ounces going down, or six ounces going down. We'll, we'll be able to see that on um, long term. And again, those numbers will be pulled from the throwing logs, which I'll show you um, in a little bit. And the last one um, for the position players is going to be your 60 yard dash tracker. Um, so this is mainly for the middle infielders or outfielders. Um, some corner guys might want to do this as well. But um, Again, this is just going to allow us to see long-term progress, um, it, and it's going to pull from your actual speed logs. So that is the profile page. Um, we'll be able to fill in some numbers and then come back to this so you can see how it would look um, after you'd been with us for maybe a couple months. But So that's your profile page. Um, the actual logs are now down here. So we have a general template um, for each different area. So you're throwing, um, you're hitting, your speed then you're lifting as well. First, we're gonna have an exercise list. Um, so that's gonna include all the exercises that are gonna be in either your warm up, which you see here, a couple different warm ups for throwing, um, depending on how much time you have. Then we also have an on-ramp period. If So if you need this, um, this will not be in everyone's program. If they've already been throwing and their arms ready to go, we'll then jump right into the actual throwing program. Um, but if you need to be on-ramped, we generally go um, for about six weeks to get unramped, it'll change with some guys, um, really depending on where their arm's at. Some guys only need four, um, some guys need a little bit more time, just depends on the guy. But then we also have our actual throwing program. And again, this is gonna vary a little bit. Um, each guy's blending routine will be different. Um, the amount of times that they actually pull down per month or the times that they actually get their velo um, on their pull downs per month are gonna change. In this particular case, um, it's every other week. So. In this case, they're going five, six, five, four. So let's say they go uh, 86, 88, 89, um, 86, and then let's say they hop up to 90. So we can see here, what was our highest velo? And then what was our average velo um, during that time? And then again, we'd be able to fill that out all the way down um, as you go through your pull downs. And we'd do that again in week four. And like I said, some guys uh, will actually have gun every week and some guys it'll only be once a month. It really depends on how you respond um, to that type of training. Um, some guys get a little bit too tight when they're gun, so we need to do that a little bit less often for those guys, but some guys um, actually need that feedback uh, to feel what, what they're doing, so we'll do that more often with those guys. Um, it just depends on where you're at and how you respond to that. So that's the throwing program. Um, I have a, di a couple different routines, and then those will be um, laid out for you. We also have a throwing recovery tab. Um, so just two different things that you alternate between um, to make sure that you're getting that recovery in so that you're prepping um, for the next time throwing. And again, all those exercises will be right here on the throwing exercise list. So that's the throwing portion of the logs. Um, next, we get into the hitting portion. So again, we have the exercise list first, and then we have the warm up next, and then we have the actual hitting program. So in this case, um, this is a little bit different than what most guys would get. Normally we'd have a day one, two, and three um, laid out. But in this particular case, I gave the athlete a couple different options um, just because that worked better for him. So depending on what he had available on each day, he could say, okay, I'm gonna do this day to day because this is what I have available. Um, and that can work as well. But the most important thing for him is that down here we're collecting the exit velos 10 swings um, once a month. So if we go ahead and plug this in, let's say they go with 86, 87, 89, 85, pop a 91, 
87, 88, 89, and then 90, and 87. Right, so now, if we actually, I'll actually take you guys back to the profile page here. Just so you guys can kind of get a, a feel for how it updates. Um, so we can see, for the exit velo, it's gonna pull the highest number. So I said his highest number there was 91. So it's gonna pull the highest number there. Let's say his initial number was, we'll go with 88, right? And he wants to get up to 95. Well, now we can see, okay, he's trending up um, towards that goal of 95. And so again, that's just kind of demonstrating that it's gonna pull numbers from where you're actually tracking so you shouldn't have to touch the profile other than to go back and look and see how you're progressing um, as long as you fill out the actual logs. So that's the hitting portion of it. Uh, next will be the speed portion. So again, this portion won't be for everybody, but for those guys trying to get faster, um, this is a big part of it. So we have your demo videos here. We have a speed warm up. And then we have the actual um, speed training log. So there's a couple different things going on here. One, we're gonna track from week one to week four. What's your 10 yard dash? What's your flying 20? This is actually supposed to be a 10. What's your flying 10, right? So we can track from week one to week four and where we pull that from is right here. So in this particular case, they're going until they hit a certain percentage drop off. So they'll stop um, when they hit that drop off, but I have laid out for them let's say it takes them eight times to hit that 3% drop off, which is actually pretty high, but let's say they just do. Um, if we plug in like a 1.06, 1.07, right? Now, if we come up here, it's gonna take the, the lowest number, which is gonna be your best number, if I zoom in here a little bit. And so you can see week one, their lowest number was a 1.06, and they're flying 10, so then we can see, okay, are they getting faster in that flying 10? And then we also do the same thing for the 10 yard dash so that we can see, okay, where's their weak spot in terms of their 60 yard dash? Is it acceleration or is it top speed? And then we can go about addressing um, those once we figure that out. So those, that's the speed program. Um, and that's not like what everyone will do. Um, that's just kind of what this athlete is doing um, in this particular template. So that's the speed. And then finally we get into the actual lifting logs. So again, we have the demo videos. So every exercise that's on your lifting log you'll be able to find and click on, take you to a YouTube link um, right here so you can watch the video and figure out what's happening. We also have the lifting warm-ups next. So uh, specific lower body and upper body warm-up. Um, these will be cycled through so that you're not doing the same thing every month, um, but you're getting that kind of new stimulus every month so that you, your body um, doesn't get used to that response that it's creating. And then we actually get into the lifting log. And if I go back actually one second to the warm up, you can see that this is where we're going to track your heart rate and it's also going to give you an average. So that average number is where we're actually going to pull the heart rate on your prof profile page from so that we can see on average, are you trending up? Are you trending down? Um, or how are you doing on that? So next we get into the actual lifting logs and this is the last section um, of the template, but you can see each day is going to be laid out here for you. You're going to have a specific schedule. When are you doing each lift? Um, and then you're going to have the actual lifts that you'll be doing. And what's nice about this is we're actually going to be able to track total poundage um, with each exercise week by week. So let's say for this one, they go 185, 195, right? However many sets they end up doing. But then let's say in week three, they go with uh, 195 and then 215, right? So they did more in week three. We can now see that they did um, 30 total pounds more in week three than they did in week one, right? So we can track total poundages um, on each exercise week by week. So as you're in the weight room, you can kind of see, okay, what do I need to do today uh, to increase my total poundage on each exercise? And then if we come up here and go over to the right here, um, we can see that we're actually gonna be able to track all exercises in week one compared to week two, three, and four. Um, so we can see did we get stronger over the course of the month or over the course of the three weeks um, that we are on this particular part of the program? Then we'll also be able to see how much did you lift for the month. Um, so we can go across your different logs and kind of compare, um, are you getting stronger? Are you moving more weight? Do you need to move less weight this month because you have something else going on? So I need to take away some volume. Um, stuff like that it just allows us to track um, kind of where you are um, and where you need to be in terms of how much you're lifting. Um, 
and, and what response that is creating. So that's the uh, lifting logs. We'll have, like I said, warm up and log um, kind of go together. So each new month you'll get a slightly different warm up. Um, that still addresses the same thing, but it's it's a little bit different um, so that your body doesn't get used to that. And the last piece here is the lifting recovery. Um, so we just have a couple different things um, that you can do, whether that's foam rolling, um, manual, manual therapy, or um, some stretching type stuff. Um, we have specific things here for you. And then if we go back to the profile page, based upon that physical assessment that we went through uh, right here, so the ones that you fail at, you'll also have specific deficiencies um, in that post-workout portion um, that would address the, the deficiencies um, that you have. If it happened to be like a muscular issue or something like that where foam rolling or stretching um, would help, that's where we would uh, insert that as well. So here's an example of that profile page filled out after six months of training. Um, and this isn't an actual athlete. Um, I just went through and put in numbers um, so that I could show you guys uh, what that would look like and kind of the visual um, that it gives you. But if I zoom in a little bit, we can see here for body weight, um, you can be able to see, okay, this is my goal line. Am I turning up towards that for six months on my exit velo? Sure, I might have gone up and down, but at the end, um, I actually exceeded my expectations. Heart rate tracker was trending down on um, what am I passing or failing in my assessment? Um, what do I still need to work on after six months? My 60 yard dash, um, I had a bad month, but eventually came back down, right? And then also the weight of balls, um, how are they reacting? Are they kind of moving in the same direction? Are they moving in opposite directions? Um, stuff like that. So just, it's kind of nice to see long-term um, the trends of these lines. And again, that's just gonna help, to help us to better program um, what you need moving forward. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in terms of the logs. Um, but I think it's important to mention that remote training with us isn't just tracking numbers, right? So you're going to have full support um, as you're going through this program so that if you have questions, um, you, can, you can definitely ask. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, that's generally within a one to two hours, um, assuming it's a decent time of day. I'll get back to you fairly quickly, um, answer that question. Um, you can send me weekly videos on whether that's of your throwing or of your hitting, um, your running whatever that happens to be. Um, I actually like guys to send me weekly videos so that um, I can help them out in terms of how they're moving in their baseball specific uh, movements. So it's not just tracking a bunch of numbers, although that definitely helps to guide um, what we're gonna be doing in the program. There's also that, that um, aspect of support. And each month we'll actually be doing a FaceTime call um, to talk about the training program of the past month, um, how did it affect you, um, what do you feel like you need moving forward? What did you like? What did you not like? Um, we can address that all um, in that FaceTime call after each month um, of training. So that's just that kind of added support that you don't ne necessarily see or get um, when I show you guys this template um, and how we do all of our tracking stuff. There's, there's more to it than that. But that's pretty much all I wanted to um, communicate with you guys. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I hope I answered any questions that you might have had about the program. Um, if you have any questions or you're interested in want to start training with us, you can shoot me an email at brady at deckbaseball.com. Um, I'd love to hear from you. love to get you rolling um, if you're interested. So again, thanks for taking the time to watch us, and I look forward to hearing from you guys soon.